I can't believe it. The two videos that I've been working on got derailed, so I need to find something new. I bought this 83.2 carat meant to be black opal on eBay about six years ago for $125. Nobody sells good opal for that price, so this will probably be a bust. Let's find out. Looking at this thing, it's kind of flat, which means it's seam opal. Opal that forms in a seam between layers of sedimentary rock. So what is the first thing that we do when we've got seam opal? We take it and we grind down the sides in an effort to try to find out what might be inside. Let's go to the wheel and let's go around this and see what we can see. Well now there's something I'd like to see every time I cut into an opal. Three real nice color bars. Two are very close together. And then there's that dark potch potch is there this layer goes around there and there's this narrow red bar at the bottom the next thing we have to do is take this to the grinder and expose the top and bottom no matter how great these sides look we have to get great color on either the top or the bottom for this to work we can see that top coming out on the left side Looks good. The top is starting to look really good. Just what we're looking for. Things aren't looking so good on the bottom. Looks like all potch. Well, the sides still look great, but we made some discoveries here. The back doesn't seem to be much. It's got that thick potch. We've got that area exposed on the top, and it looks great. Got to get the rest of that stuff off. This is worth more than $125. Those yellow flecks of material are pieces of a towel that I used to slow the wheel down. I guess I shouldn't have used that. Most of that sand at the top is coming off. It's starting to look really good. When I was at the grinder, this looked green, but now look at the red, yellow, orange, blue. This top bar, the middle bar, and the bottom bar. Now I could make a two-sided stone if I used the top and middle bars, but I'd have to sacrifice the bottom bar. But then again, I could make a one-sided stone, and who cares about the back? It looks beautiful just as it is. Spectacular. I spent a quite a while examining this stone, and this dark area only shows jelly opal, which is opal that has a somewhat hazy, almost jelly-like appearance. I can't really tell what's going on in this stone, so I'm going to remove the piece that I know is not good and see if I can figure it out from there. This is tough. I don't have to do anything with it, but it wouldn't be a show if I didn't do anything with it, would it? No, it wouldn't. When opal cutters have a huge, fabulous stone like this, every single one of them, deep down in their hearts, feels that they need to make one giant cabochon, presumably to make one giant piece of opal jewelry. Well, I understand this because, well, everybody knows my golden rule, right? Oh, you don't know? Well, I'll repeat it then. Bigger is better, and better is good. But figuring out how to make a giant cabochon out of this complex stone is tough. I mean, it's, it's like eating a bowling ball. 
it's more difficult than it sounds. But if you make a giant cabochon out of fantastic opal, you'll need to sell it for a fantastic price, a very high price. And if you're in the business of selling opal, it may take years to find somebody who can afford such a thing. The only opal that I sell I use in making expensive custom opal jewelry. Now I shouldn't do this, but I just can't resist going for the whole enchilada. Vamanos. Notice that I'm holding this opal horizontally rather than vertically. Why is that? It's just that this is the plane where the opal looks best and it looks best like this. Which if you're going to make it into a pendant, that's fine, but that color shows there. From this direction and hanging as a pendant, it's not as nice. Not ideal. There's your opal. How many people out there would wear this thing horizontally even though it's almost 40 millimeters long? I mean, this, this thing would choke an elephant, I mean, if he swallowed it the wrong way. Do I dare make a sideways pendant? But that's the way to go with this thing. As a single stone, for sure, that's the way to go. This is just an idea that I had while I was doing this. I think that it would make a fairly nice setting for the stone. Okay, let's get to it with this rant. Well, I don't need no stinking rant. I've got other things to talk about. Take it from me, you really never know what's gonna happen when these color bars, they do crazy things. I mean, they don't party at night with Sheila or anything like that, but they do other crazy things. Some people have said to me, why don't you get nervous when you're dealing with expensive stones? I'd say, well, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, whose fault is that? And don't say me. You can think it, but don't say it. Well, I do have a rant after all, but only one. I'm here to lodge my formal complaint against Opal. That's right, Opal. Back in 2012, the authorities of New South Wales came up with a great idea. A card that could be used to pay for all types of transportation. Train, bus, light rail, you name it. And name it they did. They brought in the cerebral heavy hitters from all over the world to help choose a name for this card. And what they came up with is... Brilliant. They called it... The Opal Card. How catchy. Great name, right? Wrong. Newsflash, we don't use books to find out stuff these days. Google is the new Oracle of Delphi. And if you don't believe me, Google it. So when you give something a name these days, you have to consider what might happen if you put it in a search engine. Have you ever Googled the Amazon jungle? How well did your search go? Yes, I know you found those hemp socks you wanted and that wind up anaconda too. But did you find anything out about that jungle? Of course you didn't. Nobody can find information about Amazon the jungle because search results are overcrowded with stuff about Amazon the company. Some of you know that I've reported the important things in the Opal world. The Opal news. And what's more important than that? Nothing. But do you have any idea how hard it is to find Opal news when Google is flooded with stuff about Opal the card? And what about Opal sellers? Do you think that buyers can even find them? No! In the U.S., messing with the news is a felony, and I'd sure hate to see those government drongos trapped in an ankle party at the Gray Bar Hotel, if you know what I mean. End of rant. When you've got stones like this that are directional, it's best to use them as a ring. 
stone. That way people can come from the side and say, hey, you got a nice ring there, buddy. Or, oh, look at that nice ring you've got on. What fingers you have. What crusty, opal-dusted fingers you have. It came out pretty much like I wanted. It's 39.05 carats. I'm very happy with it. It's, it, it's a stunning stone. The winner of the 3.92 carat fingers opal is Boston Joe. The winner of the 4.98 honeycomb opal is Sue Mead. Here are the two giveaway stones for this week. We've got a 6.60 carat dark base meant to be opal with some jelly opal on the back and a 5.59 honeycomb Ethiopian opal from last time's video that I just never got to. To participate, use the word enchilada in a comment. Except for the derailed projects, it's been a very good week. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, all the rest, and we'll see you next time.